The Jedi Knighting Ceremony is an ancient tradition that has been in effect for a thousand years, allowing Padawans to transcend from a Padawan to a Jedi Knight, and maybe one day a Master. But the journey to get to that point was not an easy one. In order for a Jedi Padawan to be knighted, they would need to pass the five trials, the trial of skill, courage, spirit, flesh, and insight. But despite the thousands of Jedi that has passed the trials, this was no easy task, and would push the young Jedi to their absolute limits in many aspects. So join me today as we discuss the five Jedi trials in the Knighting Ceremony. Also, a quick reminder to leave your questions about me and the channel in the comments below. I have a video planned very soon and it requires your questions about me and the channel. Starting off with the Trial of Skill. Now, despite its name, the Trial of Skill is not based around physical strength, but rather the Jedi's ability to maintain self-discipline, even in the wakes of distraction. Along with this, the Jedi must also be skilled in the blade of a lightsaber and the control of it. But before the days of the Clone Wars, the Trial had many different aspects, while balancing on the tip of a wooden shaft and keeping a single pebble suspended while transcending in the vortex of a howling Tythonese hailstorm. While the many Jedi believe the trial of skill means outlasting a Jedi battle master in a duel, that is in very few circumstances the case. Or instead of facing off against that person, they would face multiple opponents at once, which would prove to be very tiring as more fresh opponents enter to battle. But this is not all. In fact, there is so much more than fighting itself. On top of fighting multiple opponents, the floor tiles may also shift, making them lose balance. Or, if the Padawan is very lucky, they may even face a Jedi council member for their trial. Another challenge that the Padawans may face is the holograms of a Sith Lord they would be forced to fight. But if they manage to pass this, we'd move on to the next trial, the Trial of Courage. Despite the Jedi being more powerful than most other people, they are still easily outnumbered in the galaxy. But as Jedi, they are taught to always trust in the Force and to confront the evil that may threaten them or others. But the evil inside of them may vary from Padawan to Padawan. It is unknown exactly what the Trial of Courage looks like for a given individual, because it varies on their fear. But a Jedi can skip this trial altogether if they were to demonstrate battlefield heroics, which may mean facing off a Sith Lord alone. But this would be dangerous to some Padawans being overly confident in their skills. And overconfidence is a flaw that can often make situations much worse, which is why courage must often be aligned with the force precept of the Jedi Code. There is no chaos, there is harmony. But if there is no war to be fought and the Jedi Padawan still wants to pass the trial from the means of heroics, there is a possibility of them being assigned a special mission by the Jedi Council, which may be incredibly dangerous or is a creation of the Council to test them. But for this trial to be completed, it must remain unaltered. The next trial is probably the most physically demanding out of all of them. The Trial of Flesh tested the Padawan's abilities to overcome great pain, and similar to many other trials went through many changes. Back in the Old Republic era, Padawans would be subject to torments of cold, cuts, sonic shocks, and low-level blaster fire. This would become known as the burning to some smugglers. But as time went on, the Jedi started to view this as barbaric. But despite its many changes, the principle remained the same, divorcing the soul from the spirit. But if it was a time of war, a Padawan could skip this trial altogether by surviving a war injury by proof of their scars. But in the rare occasion that a Padawan actually bested a Sith Lord in combat, it would simultaneously passed the trial of skill, flesh, and courage all at once. But since the galaxy wasn't always at a state of war, and much less by the Sith, this would rarely happen. Padawans also weren't expected to prove their worth through wounds as time went on. And despite the trial of flesh being mainly about physical agony, it also targeted emotional damage as well, specifically the loss of their master when they moved on to be knighted. This would prove to be very difficult to many Padawans. But this is where the first precept came in. There is no emotion, there is peace. This next trial to many young Jedi was viewed as one of the hardest trials, the trial of spirit. While many people believe that the Jedi exist solely to destroy their enemies, the Jedi from their point of view are mere countermeasures to the Sith. The Trial of Spirit was known by many as facing a mirror. While Jedi may hold great power, the Jedi who fell to the dark side would have unleashed that power in waves of misery. This is the reason the Trial of Spirit exists, to measure the Padawan's temptations, and if they are willing to put them aside for the greater good. And while in many aspects it is similar to the Trial of Skill, it does not require any physical movement, and in fact is all in the mind, and victory is only achieved once the Padawan finds peace. While it is impossible to describe what the trial looks like within the mind, it must occur within a deep meditation and will be tempted by the dark side. Despite the trial only occurring in the mind, many describe it as if they are being transported off a of Coruscant into a distant location, and while there, will face their deepest fears and their enemies. This could push many Jedi to lose control over themselves for a brief moment, but they must remember the third precept of the code, there is no passion, there is serenity. And only once have they accepted the grief, shame, and revenge will they pass the trial. The final trial is a trial of insight. The trial of insight is the test the Jedi on their capabilities on not being deceived. But unlike many other trials, this is not a trial that has existed for tens of thousands of years, but instead has only existed for a few thousand years. Within a galaxy as large as the Star Wars one, deception and misdirection is very common among the people, even towards Jedi. A major factor of this is the Hut species being very deceptive. The Trial of Insight would test the Padawan's ability to see through illusions and be able to judge a person from the inside and filter out distractions. This trial, like others, had many forms, some of which include finding a grain of sand in a field of stone, the 
determining the context and meanings of a fragmented text from scattered remains and solving some very specific riddles. But unlike the other trials, this one could occur at any time. And one of the ways to pass the trial of insight, a Jedi Padawan must be able to find the truth in decept and trickery. And once the Jedi Padawans completed all the trials, they would be knighted and make an official Jedi Knight. But what would happen if a Jedi were to fail the trial? This is a video I plan to cover sometime in the near future, so be on the lookout for that. What are your thoughts on this topic? Make sure to leave a question about me and the channel as a video I plan to make as once I reach 1,000 subscribers. So make sure to like and subscribe, and with that, my fellow Star Wars nerds, may the Force be with you.